Good morning. Music's done. I didn't even notice. Did you notice? Well, I bet you noticed. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. Let me do a refresh here. We'll see who's here. It is uh, overcast again today uh, and colder here in uh, the North Woods. Um, turned into a busy day yesterday. Bonnie had work for me to do that I wasn't planning on, and then the stuff I was planning on took more time than I planned on, and welcome to my world. So good morning. Glad you're here on this, the last day of 2022. That's right. Midnight tonight. Yeah, it, it, our time. Well, at Michigan, you're going to do it um, an hour earlier than we are, but, you know, we're done. 2022 is done. We're on to 2023. We'll see what that brings. We pray for, we pray for good things in 2023, but we'll just have to see what the Lord will provide, but we can, we can ask him for it. Um, right now, like 19 degrees here in the, in the North Woods, the melt has created ice. Uh, the parking lot of the church right now looks like a uh, roller uh, ice rink uh, out there. Um, I drove through it with a truck and it it slid around, not to the point of dangerous, but it was, we weren't on a firm foundation as we were sliding around. So, um, yeah, yeah, so good morning. I, as I noted in my comment, uh, the new year has begun already on the other side of the world. Uh, Bonnie was, uh, when she sat down this, just a little bit before we started here, she was watching fireworks in Australia that were an hour ago. Uh, so, you know, kind of starts at the prime meridian, um, Greenwich Mean Time, zero, or no, prime meridian, zero, and as it moves around the world, as, a, as, as the world turns, as the old uh, soap opera uh, was called, uh, as the world turns, we get, we get uh, the new year coming to us. Yeah, it really doesn't. You know, it's it's a it's a demarcation, right? It's a beginning and an end for us, but it's it's relative. It's it's our perception. Um, the world goes on. We just flip the calendar page to a new year, right? Um, and and tomorrow will be no different than today, other than uh, you'll have to try to remember the twenty. We're in the twenty twenty three now, not in in twenty twenty two. You had to write January 1st on your checks or whatever you're writing. Although who writes checks anymore, right? Um, we do, but, you know, fuddy-duddy that I am, we are. Um, yeah. Meg, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. There's Jill and John. Good morning to you guys. Michael. Michael Hammer. <laughs> oh, Mike. Good morning to you and to Karen. Ashley, good morning. Going down to Marshfield this morning. Okay, I hope that's for a good reason. Jerry, good morning to you. Overcast 44. Wow, you're 44 degrees over there. Uh, kind of makes me wonder why I left Michigan. 1944. I'd rather be 44. Uh, well, you know, the Lord wanted me here, not there. So uh, let's see here. Uh, so cheery. Verna, go up. Oh, then I jumped. Verna, good morning to you. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm coffee good this morning. Brain not moving so fast. Debbie, Ann, and Grant, good morning to you guys. Renee, good morning. Saying goodbye to 2022 and praying for good things in 2023. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, you know, and 2022 wasn't a bad year. There have been a lot of good things. I, I should, you know, uh, the, there's an advantage. There would be an advantage to journaling. I don't journal. I probably should, but keeping track of the of the good things that happened during the year. So at the end of the year, you can you can say, all right, this was, you know, uh, things may have seemed bleak at some point, but here's the good stuff. But instead, we kind of go through the we kind of go through our day to day and just. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it was, it's behind us now, move on. And what we wind up doing is the things that build up the strongest cognitive uh, impression are always the bad things. 
right? It's, it's easy to remember the bad things, the difficult things. It's not easy to remember uh, the good things. Why is that? Well, because the good things are good and, and we accept them and we're happy for them and they, they don't create that big an impression on us. But when bad things happen, it builds up uh, it builds up an impression because of the response to those things. So I guess journaling would be a good thing. When would I find the time to do that? And certainly if I did it by these things, those of you who've gotten Christmas cards or notes from me in the past know handwriting is no good. I can read it most of the time. Um, I did some thank you notes here the other day that people are going to be getting on Sunday. And, uh, well, if you can read them, thanks be to God. <laughs> All right. Let us move into the business. I suppose I should do one more refresh and just make sure that nobody's popped up here. Well, I have been uh, mumbling and murmuring. Uh, oh, not that slide. This slide. Um, Mushtaq. Good evening to you, brother. No Bible study today, huh? Um, yeah, Mushtaq popped in, and I think that's uh, I think that's it. Okay, let's move on. I have my treasury of daily prayer. You may or may not have the Lutheran Service Book, page two hundred and ninety-five, daily prayer for individuals and families. That is where. We will begin this morning as we begin our day on, on I begin our day on, or in Mushtaq's case, finish his day, um, uh, in, in the Lord, uh, 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 in the way that we do. Uh, yeah. My brain's a little all over the place this morning. I got projects that got canceled because deliveries aren't coming. I'm supposed to put a new water pump in Bonnie's car today. And, and I've got a little more work lined up for it than that, but the water pump is kind of important. And, and the delivery got pushed back to Monday, which I don't know how it's going to get here on Monday. But if it does, I won't have time to do it on Monday. Okay. Lutheran Service Book 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Family. The Morning Order. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 111, verses 1 through 6 and 10. That's what we have today. Psalm 111. Oh, we're going to have to do this. This is good. Praise the Lord. What a way to begin. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright in the congregation... Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Excuse me. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. The word is true. Um, what kind of fear is that? Well, it you know, the 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 reason that sometimes it's difficult to understand the scriptures is that 
it's often, the scriptures are often twofold in what they are saying. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> our, our little Greek group, um, Pastor Danner, who is our circuit visitor here, and he's also kind of the leader of the Greek group. I mean, unofficially, but he's the one who encourages it, and, and I think he's the one who, who started it years ago. <clears throat> but through him and, and others, don't, I mean, he's not, this is not uniquely his, but we tease him about it, um, is the both and, right? Uh, we look at the text sometimes, and, uh, well, and we say, well, okay, um, it could mean this or it could mean that. And, and, uh, and, and, and after studying it for a while, we kind of realize, well, yeah, it means both of those and this, right? So both and. Um, the fear of the Lord. We have Christianity. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to say to say to, to this effect, Christianity has created on the part of, of the church a desire not to teach the fear of the Lord as fear, right? Um, that we should be afraid of God um, because he loves us and he, he wants to take care of us and, and he wants to feed us and make sure we have every, every need, which is true. So when it comes to the Lord, we have nothing to fear. But that sets aside the fact that God is the judge and that he has the power to make alive and to kill and he has the power to give eternal life and withhold it or give everlasting death, I guess, would be the withholding of it. So both and, right? Should we fear God? Yes, we should be afraid of him, right? And in, in Deuteronomy and in, in uh, uh, the Exodus, when he gives us the Ten Commandments, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, uh, suffering the iniquities of those who hate me to the third and fourth generations. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, God does punish sin ultimately. Not penultimately, right? Not before the end, but ultimately at the end, God punishes sin. But those who are in him, who are in Christ Jesus, who, who have faith in God, those in the Old Testament who looked forward to the coming of the Messiah and trusted in God's word, Abraham being a, a prime example um, for God counted his faith to him as righteousness. That's a, a, that's a, a, a financial term, that accounting, the tabulation. Um, they still fear God, and we still fear God if we're baptized into Christ and, and live in him. Um, but our fear is more of a respect fear, fear of our, a fear of a, a father who loves us, who disciplines his children, but not of one who would destroy us. For those who are outside, destruction is their end. So both and, right? We should fear God. So the fear of the Lord, understanding that God carries all the authority of the heavens and the earth and everything over everything therein, and that he has the authority to bring to an end everything if he so wishes. And certainly me as an individual, that I should fear his judgment is the beginning of wisdom. If you fear somebody, but then they look at you and say, do not be afraid, come follow me. Live in me as I have, as I have given you. Then the fear becomes one of respect. <clears throat> I remember my, my first real boss, Grandma Henninger, my buddy Gerard's grandmother ran a chicken restaurant, Captain, <laughs> Captain Bob Silver Skill in the Cross. Good chicken, good fish, good burgers. But she was a, a fierce teacher, you know, uh, in teaching me to mop the floors in the kitchen. Um, if she wasn't happy with what I had done, she'd kick the pail over, say, now mop the floor. Um, you know, the young teenager, he's afraid of that kind of stuff, and it makes him mad. But you learned discipline. 
But she always said, she always said to me, when I, there was one time I thought she was mad at me. I thought she was really mad at me. And she said, am I still talking to you? And I said, yeah, you're still talking to me. She said, then I'm not that mad at you. When I'm mad at you, I'll stop talking to you. And that means that you won't be here much longer, right? And with God, the blessing that we seek for God, right? That, that ironic blessing that many of you are going to hear in church tomorrow on the 1st of January, the circumcision and naming of Jesus. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Talks about God speaking to us. And that's that's what I that's what I often turn back to is if you are still in conversation with God, even though you might be disparaging God, if you're still in conversation with you, you believe in Him, because in order to speak to something, you believe in Him, and as long as He's still speaking to you through His Word, right, then there's a, a there's common ground, there's a place to return to. But if He stops speaking to you and you stop speaking to Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. And that's the understanding. His praise endures always. To the ends of the age? No, forever. That's a good psalm. We should have probably read the entirety of it. Well, all right. On to our reading. I mean, Pastor, you've already given us 10 minutes on a psalm. What are we going to do with Isaiah 61 through 22? But I don't know. I haven't read it yet. <clears throat> Isaiah 61 through 22. Oh, <clears throat> we're coming close to the end here. This is kind of lengthy, so sit back in your seats and just listen. It's, it's, uh, yep, it's all poetry again. 60 verse 1 and following. Uh, I didn't see Kathy out here today. Hmm. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of all the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar. And I will beautify my house. I, I will beautify my beautiful house. <clears throat> Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? For the close coastlands shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from afar, their silver and gold with them. For the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. Foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Your gates shall be open continually, day and night they shall not be shut. The people may bring to you the wealth of the nations, and their kings led in procession. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish." Those nations shall be utterly laid to waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you shall become bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, 
the Zion of the Holy One Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you majestic forever, a joy from age to age. You shall suck the milk of the nations, you shall nurse at the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will make your overseers peace and your taskmasters righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. And you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall be no more your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give you light. But the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. Your people shall, be, shall all be righteous. They shall possess the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. The least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will hasten it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's good stuff here. What, oh what, oh what is, is the Lord given to Isaiah to talk about here? Well, there's a you here, right? Throughout this text, um, again, it's poetic and it's imagery, imagery, but it's all pointed at you, right? Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations will shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and you shall see and it's talking to the holy city of Jerusalem, but not the earthly city. The one that comes through Christ, the kingdom that is coming in with the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, and that in its end, on the last day, when all has been destroyed and made new, the new Jerusalem coming out of the heavens. Now, but this is a, this is a now and not yet, a both and. Because... When God restores Jerusalem, when he brings the people of, of, well, now called, the, at this point, called the Judeans or the Jews, when he brings them back from Babylon after the 70 years of captivity, he restores Jerusalem, and Jerusalem becomes a major trade center. And the people of Jerusalem benefit from it. The, the city of Jerusalem is, is made great again. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> the glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I'll make the place of my feet glorious. The temple is rebuilt. And in the time of Christ, during the, during the time of the Herodians, ruling in Jerusalem over the Jews, the temple is rebuilt into a bigger and more glorious place than it had been. I don't know that it's ever more glorious than when, when Solomon built it, but it's it's larger and, and an amazing thing. Even the apostles sitting with Jesus one day outside the temple after the, after the events of the widow's might say, look at this place, this, this marvelous place, the stones and the gold and, and all of this that we have built for the Lord. And Jesus looks at it and says, it's all coming down. Not one stone will be left above another. But God will bring the people back from Babylon, and he will restore Jerusalem, and, and it will become a major trade center, and its people will come to it. But so also, Christ, right? So also, Christ. Um, wait. Uh, uh, where was it now? Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. The nations will come to Jerusalem because it's a major point, but the nations will all come to Christ as he is high and lifted up. 
right? If he were to lift his eyes from the cross and gaze outward with his divine vision, he would see the future and the promise. Your son shall come from afar, your daughters carried on the hip, and then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because of the abundance of the sea returned to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels cover you. Young camels from Midian, Ephah, those from Sheba. That's the east. That's the east. And so now we're talking about the epiphany. We're talking about the wise men who come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news the praises of the lord right all the world comes in the in the embodiment of the wise men and next friday is epiphany and we'll talk about that a little bit then but in in the entourage that is the wise men that comes and brings these three gifts all the flocks of kadar gathered to you the rams of nebaioth shall minister to you and they shall come up with acceptance to my altar sacrifices will be made See, now and not yet. The restoration of Jerusalem in, in uh, I was going to say 500 A.D. I don't remember the exact date, but let's, for round numbers, let's say 500 A.D. Um, it's probably closer to, or B.C. It's probably closer to 700 B.C. Um, but the restoration of the, of the, uh, of the temple, the restoration of the city of Jerusalem, the rebuilding of the walls, but also the coming of Christ there in, in Bethlehem, of Jerusalem, right? Of Judea, outside Jerusalem, um, when all the nations will come. And whereas Jesus, on the day that he makes his most important, where his, where his presence becomes most important for us, it's in Jerusalem, when they take him outside the city after judging him and hanging him on the cross where he is lifted up, right? And then the final Jerusalem on the last day, and that's at the end of the text here. I will make your overseers peace, your taskmasters righteousness. Violence is no more. Devastation and destruction of borders is, within borders is no more. Uh, the walls are called salvation, and your gates, praise, you enter into the walls of salvation through cries of praise and thanksgiving. And then the sun is no more, your light by day, for nor the brightness of the moon, because you will overshadow it with your brightness. The Lord will be at the everlasting light, your God will be your glory, the sun will no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. That's the eternity. That's the eternal kingdom that is Christ's kingdom. When Pilate says, are you a king? And he says, so you say I am. If I had been a king, in, in John's gospel, if, if I had been a king of which you speak, then my people would have not put down their weapons. But you see, my people don't raise any weapons because my kingdom is not of this world. But his kingdom is the kingdom of everlasting that comes after this and your people, your people, you, my friends, shall be righteousness. They shall possess the land forever. The branch of my planting, which is Jesse, or the son of Jesse, sorry, Jesus. The work of my hands that I might be glorified, that the least one shall become a clan, and the smallest one a mighty nation. And Paul picks up on this in Galatians when he says that in Christ we are all one, right? So it doesn't matter if you're the smallest uh, the, or least, like Benjamin, for instance. Bethlehem of Benjamin, which is the smallest of the clans, especially after the events of the book of Judges. Christ is who we are, and in Christ we are all one. And so we become one clan. And the passage that we read closes off with, I am the Lord, right? So I am Yahweh, or in the Greek, ego ami, but it, this would be Hebrew. I am Adonai. Yahweh Adonai. I am the Lord. That's a statement of absolute authority, followed by 
in its time, I will hasten it. When the time was right, he sent his only begotten son into the world to die, to give his life as a sacrifice for you and I, so that by believing in him, we might have eternal life by the work that he has done for us, by the forgiveness of sins. At this end of the year, as, as 22 draws to a close and 2023 begins, even though it's a relative and truly arbitrary thing, remember, recall that the sins of the year past are forgiven in Christ Jesus. And you'll go into 2023 cleansed, purified, forgiven, and living in the promise of him who by his death gives you life. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Eternal God, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now ending and commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come. In the new year, Abide among us with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue with the Apostles' Creed after I have a little bit of this. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Get rid of the text up there. Our prayer for this Saturday morning. I know it's New Year's Day, but we had a good collect for the for the New Year's Eve. Um, and here's our here's our prayer for this for a Saturday. Well, maybe I should look quick here. Yeah, no, let's just stick with this prayer for Saturday. Let us pray. Lord of our rest, thank you for this Saturday, a day of repose. This day invites us to celebrate the work of this week, to rest our bodies, minds, and spirits, relaxing and entertaining ourselves as we see fit. Thank you for the work that we have accomplished and the work that we have yet to complete. Forgive me if I was negligent so that I do not carry my guilt into the coming week. Cleanse my heart of the burden that it carries so that this day may be a day of repose and celebration. Thank you for this Saturday, a day blessed and sanctified so that we can remember how necessary it is to rest. May I think about you, creator of this Saturday, so that I dedicate myself to the enjoyment of all that has been created and produced with a thankful heart. In the tomb of Christ, who rested this day in the tomb to rise with joy and power to a new life. In his name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this last day of the new year, we ask that you forgive us all our sins that have come in the days past or that will come on this day. Help us to not do those things that are displeasing to you and to show them to us so that we might repent and turn away from them. Grant us in the new year your peace, the prosperity. But above all, Lord, help us to see you as our Lord and Savior and to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done, and to care for our brothers and sisters and our neighbors, even as you have cared for us. Especially this day, we pray for those who are 
who are hurting in body, mind, or soul, whether it be the effects of illness or age or injury. We pray especially for Jeremy, Pat, Lois, Ann, Rianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant us and them your strength, your comfort, and your assurance at the end of this year that we might go forward with your countenance upon us in the year to come. Help us to see you as our Lord and our Savior. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God's blessings, my friends, on this Saturday morning. We'll be back here on the 2nd, on Tuesday, on Monday morning. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, just because tonight's New Year's Eve doesn't mean you shouldn't go to church tomorrow. Go tomorrow. Hear about the circumcision and naming of Christ our Lord. God's blessings to you, and we'll see you back here on, on Monday.